Hi there. Here I am once again, Vin Rogers Jr. Can you read that? Can you read that? Some of you read, I know that much. Let me walk into the shot here. Do you remember me? I have four of these things up, you know, on the YouTube, and this is the fifth, folks. Keep you interested. I uh, had an interesting uh, thing happen the other day. I was watching a program which is called, um, uh, what is it called? It's called Frontline. And in any case, when you have callers, folks, uh, uh, you know, spend a little bit more and, <laughs> and get a good one. The paper collars aren't worth a damn. Anyway, it's Frontline. And uh, it had to do with the uh, Colleges Incorporated. It's telling about these large uh, conglomerate uh, colleges that are absorbing nonprofit uh, colleges in order to make them more sound and, you know, to get the public involved in going to these things, which often results in degrees that don't do you one damn bit of good. What struck me about this was an outfit in Los Angeles, and they were trying to take over Patton University. Patton University. Patton University. Patton University is over in Oakland, California. It was founded by B.B. Patton, the Reverend B.B. Patton, Dr. B.B. Patton. Let me give you some idea of this thing. This woman died here, who oh, I think about t roughly 10 years ago, she was 90 years old, covered with honors. There was wailing and gnashing of teeth. Oh, it was just awful. This woman is a saintly woman. Better even than, than Mother Teresa. Move over, Mother Teresa. Let Bibi Patton in. Let her in there. She's there. You're talking a real saint. Well, I like to devote most of this program to talking about Bibi Patton. Give you some idea, this lady. She was born, I don't know, sometime in the beginning of the 20th century. Well, she, she died, as I say, at age 90. She uh, was from the South, and as a girl 16, she made a very unfortunate marriage, as many people did in those days, probably a shotgun, things, whatever. At any rate, she, uh, she divorced. Now, that should have been the end of any ev evangelical crusade, because, you know, divorce. Surprising number of them are divorced, notably Reverend Heggie from Antonio, Texas. He's divorced, has children both sides of the marriage. You should imagine he shut up. No, no, he's, he's, he's all for it. Anyway. She went south to Southern California to, go, to join the ministry of Amy Semple McPherson. And Amy uh, was at her high point at that time when Bibi learned the tricks of the trade. Some were very good, I have to admit. One of them was that everybody is welcome to her congregation, blacks, Latinos, Jews, at a time when that was unheard of. American churches, the Episcopal congregation, were thoroughly racist. She was not. She learned something else from Bibi, and that was how to raise money. Oceans of it. Of it. Well, she finished her coursework there. I don't know if she got a degree where they even offered them. It's kind of a crazy thing anyway. But she married a guy by the name of Patton, and his first name was C, he was C, period, Thomas Patton. The WAG said that that C stood for cash, and we'll get to that. They married. Now, our story begins this way. They arrived in Oakland, California. This is in 1944. The Second War is still going on, and here they are, and they are on uh, a Broadway in Oakland. They are dead broke, except for 25 cents. They go into a, one of these awful restaurants, and they order a bowl of soup for 25 cents. Uh, she, uh, she drank the soup, he ate the crackers. From the little acorn grows the mighty oak. Having replenished themselves to that extent, they went out in the front of the building and start with the tambourines and all of this stuff. And from the little acorn grows the mighty oak. The next thing you know, they had been able to rent a storefront. And then a larger storefront. And then, would you believe, rented the City Club, on, I think it's on Alice Street, those of you may know, rented this at 1,500 seats, but, you know, just twice a week, maybe midweek service and then a Sunday service. Now the operation is really going. Here is how they operate it. B.B. comes out. She's in white robes, flowing white robes, just like Amy Semple McPherson 
absolutely virginal. And uh, she's got the tambourine, but she's not doing much with it because she's saying, you know, later in the program there's going to be great works and healings and singing and carrying on and all. But first I want you to hear from Brother Patton, who has a very important message, blah, blah, blah. Well, on comes C. Thomas Patton. Now here was a guy, he didn't beg for money. He didn't plead for it. He demanded it. And he had the way of doing it. He said, I talked to God just before I come down here. And God told me that I'd have to raise $10,000 at this meeting. And as I look out there tonight at some of you, you people out there, I know you're going to come along with the pledge and you're going to help me, aren't you? Your place in heaven is assured. But then there's those of you out there, you don't intend to come along, do you? Well, there's the torments of hell out there. Never forget it. And that's how he raised the money. It was extremely effective. During the Second War, you see, people couldn't spend money on cars. Things like that were rationed. There was all kinds of cash around. And they arrived in town just at the right time. The next thing you know, he's saying, my friends, why should we be paying rent on this city club? Hell, let's buy the building. And they bought it. They bought the building in the name of C. Thomas Patton and B.B. Patton. No uh, non-profit thing or for the congregation in their personal account. That's the way they did everything. The next thing they say, he comes along, he says, you know, they've got a dance studio up there on the third floor, and there's a bar on the second floor, and oh, I'd like to get rid of them, but, but you see, we can't. They, they're on a long-term lease. It was a lie. They weren't on a long-term, they were month to month. So what does C. Thomas Patton and B.B. do? They take all that rent money and they put it in their pocket, as they did everything else. Next thing you know, they're talking about having a Bible college. Well, neither one of them has had any credentials for it, but uh, they felt they'd have to be, build B.B. up a little bit. So he had a friend who was a, um, uh, an ex-con from, from Missouri, I believe it was. He ran a, 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 a degree mill. And so for a few dollars, he bought B.B. a Ph.D. or a, B, a Ph.D. in theology. And that was the basis of Dr. B.B. Patton. And that's the only degree she ever got outside of honorary ones, which would just flood the market. But that was the basis for her theological background was from a, from a degree mill. Let's not forget that. That didn't come out in the obits, I can tell you. So at this point, they now say that the Bible College is accredited by the University of California. University of California doesn't, doesn't authenticate Bible Colleges. Come on, just another one of their lies to raise money. And the money comes pouring in and so forth. And uh, so now they have another grand idea. Why don't we have an orphanage, a Christian orphanage? So once again, start beating the tambourine and out comes Thomas. We got this parcel up here, it's 200 acres out there and there's animals out there where the children, they'll learn, they learn agriculture like I did when I was a lad. It's a great prophecy. Help us with the money, help us with the money. And they bought 200 acres out in outer Alameda County. And once again, the title is in the name of B.B. Patton and C. Thomas Patton. Well, he has another better idea. He says, you know, that parcel we bought, that's not right on the road. There's a parcel out in front of it. Somebody else might buy that parcel, turn it into a whorehouse or a bar or something of that kind. To protect the orphans, I suggest we purchase that property. Tambourines, so forth, raise more money, buy this strip of property. Deed is in the pocket of the, of the patents. Where are the orphans? Well, see Thomas Patton explains it this way. He says, you know, you can't do nothing anymore because of Washington, D.C. You see, you have to get permits from, uh, from the government back in, in Washington to do that kind of thing. Sounds almost like Ronald Reagan, doesn't it? You know, Washington, the big enemy. And the only way you can get around that is if we can raise some more money. So you raise more money. Incidentally, the people are wondering, where the hell are the orphans? Well, they finally got one, one at least. He was a caretaker. He's 50 years old. His parents had long since dead, and there was your orphan. Now, this thing is getting a really huge size. Money pouring in, 
and uh, there seems to be no end, and everything is cash, cash, cash. Very little in the way of books or anything of that sort. They decide that they're going to go into broadcasting. Amy Symbol McPherson had been broadcasting since 1924. So now they're going to catch up. Not only that, they're going to, get a, they're going to be on TV. So they fill out an FCC uh, uh, form, you know, which, which had, was just a mass, mass of lies from one end to the other, which was then notarized. Well, you see, you've, you've already put yourself in a rather awkward position because people now began to realize there could be something wrong with this couple. And another thing was that C. Thomas Patton was getting to be a little personal with regard to the money. He was taking an awful lot of trips up to Reno, Nevada. And uh, he was spending ready cash. And he was uh, writing checks for which there was uh, no accounts and so forth. It's not a good thing to do to gamblers. That's, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. And he, you wind up with a knuckle sandwich there somewhere. You want to be very careful. But he was not. And so this was a problem for him. And what brought him down was what's known as material representation. Now here's how that operates. Make a promise that you're going to do something and in order to collect money and then not fulfill the promise. In this particular case, the pitch would go like this. He'd say to a widow lady, he'd say, he'd say lady, that husband of yours, you know, we're going to immortalize him. We're going to have this stained glass window. It's going to be just absolutely beautiful. There'll be a picture, there'll be Jesus right there, and there'll be St. Peter. And St. Peter will have a face looking an awful lot like your old husband. You oh yeah, put it there. All in glorious gold glass. It's gonna be so beautiful. Ten thousand dollars, that's a mere nothing. She coughs up the money. Well, do you build the do you build the thing? Do you do you ever do it? No, you put the money in your pocket. There's the mistake. He came to trial, he was indicted by a grand jury. And uh, this was in 1948, only four years after these people had started their operation. There's millions of dollars involved here. His appearance in court was absolutely staggering. He was, had cowboy outfits, fits, you know, all of the applique and stuff, avocado colored, cherry colored, all this stuff, cowboy boots. He had over 200 handmade cowboy boots that he owned. And every day that that court was going, at noon, he'd go home, change, and come into a fresh outfit. He was literally telling them what the, what the fraud was all about. Well, he convicted him, and uh, he spent three years, and he got a 10-year sentence, he was out in three, and uh, on probation, which was to this effect. Now, you must promise not to be involved in the money in any way. And eh, come on, for God's sakes, all he had to do was whisper in Bibi's ear and say, honey, do this, do that, and of course, that's probably exactly what he did. So he died uh, very shortly after this. Not many more years he, he went to his reward. And it was Bibi as a solo. I don't think she was involved in the incredible, after this, after this incident, I don't think she involved herself in criminalities as she had done earlier. The district attorney made the point. He said that although we're not indicting her, she was the one who set the platform for him to uh, engage in this fraud against the people of Oakland. So she, she was guilty, but they couldn't do much about it. All these years later, we now have Patton University. This wonderful woman, adored in Israel, pro-Israel. So uh, she, she met Menachem Beg and all these people. They <laughs> welcomed her because she's pro-Israel. Just crazy. I wonder, what does it take for people just to take little time out to check on these things. Now, I warn you of something. Many of you will think you can get an education by looking at Wikipedia. Think twice, my friends, think twice. When you punch in B.B. Uh, Patton, it'll come up and you're going to get a long biography of B.B. Patton and it'll even mention C. Thomas Patton as her husband and little more. And you can go through entry after entry, page after page, maybe 50, 60 citations and you don't ever come to what about C. Thomas Patton and his activity. But, but, punch in C. Thomas Patton and see what you get. And you'll find out that what I have told you is absolutely nothing more than the unvarnished truth. I'll see you another time. Be sure to check on that Vin Rogers Jr. That, that's a compulsory address, folks. Uh, this isn't a matter of, uh, of volition at all. You, you have, it's mandatory. You have to put that in your thing.
and check to see if there are new postings. And if there aren't, review the old ones for your edification. And I'll be seeing you.